आई रिक्वेस्ट सी ए संदीप सुरेका एंड सी ए अनिल मंडावेवाला जी टू एस्कोर्ट आवर स्पीकर एंड रिक्वेस्ट देम टू टेक देयर सीट्स ऑन द डायस I welcome you all to this very interesting segment after the lunch. Here we get an insight to the future of profession and how to mint money using knowledge of capital market. First part of this session we have deliberation on audit auditor and technology. By our today speaker C A Anand Prakash Jangir ji. now i read his profile he is passionate inveigalist for tech based disruption in audit and finance domain anand is professionally a chartered accountant and certified information system auditor he is managing partner at aja an organization with focus in area of forensic audit is audit fraud analytics and blockchain for internal audit function Anand was part of the risk management team at Goldman Sachs of covering multiple audits across much geography for different function in the organization his area of specialization were forex audit dp audit anti money laundering based basel 2 bcp and operational risk prior to goldman sachs he was with the es consulting group at Infosys Technologies Limited Bangalore here he was involved in the development of regulatory compliance framework for various compliances like sarbanes oxley act and was part of the team developing solution at for basel 2 accord implementation his responsibilities include working in synchronization with project of infosys consulting dallas He has been involved in enterprise risk management implementation and IT audit for many international project at USA, UK, Japan, China, etc. Other professional interest: He is visiting faculty for IIM Bangalore, teaching IS audit and fraud analytics. Speaker at North America CACs and Euro CACs of ISACA. Visiting faculty at ISACA, ICI, and Wellinger Institute of Management. now i request c a hari ram agrawal to offer bouquet to our speaker c a anand prasad jangir please put your hands together and give big round of applause now i introduce c a anil mandewala ji who is session chairman of this session i re i read his profile he is senior partner in mandavewala and company his education is bcom and fca he was president of our wipka in 2011-12 he is a secretary at bbd bag professional association he has expertise in handling income tax matter he strongly believes in giving back to the society and is actively engaged in various organization like puddar chhatra nivas blnl vora chhatra nivas now i request ca vasudev agrawal ji to offer bouquet to ca anil mandave wala ji please put your hands together and give a big round of applause now i request our speaker c anand prakash jange to start his deliberation Okay. Uh, okay. So, very good morning or good afternoon, actually, I would say. 
to all of you. I know it's a post-lunch session. Post-lunch sessions are really dangerous session. So I take extra care to prepare for them. I'll keep it myself a little more active, I would say. I already requested the organizer for sharing me one cup of black coffee. So I, because the food was very good, I can understand, OK? So uh, friends, let's try to understand. You know, the topic which was given to me, and uh, the chairman sir called me up and said, let's try to focus on a little interesting topic which will be useful for members and across the board. So one of the things we discussed was what should be the thing we should work on. And we came out with a topic like audit, auditor technology. And usually what happens is technology discussion has become a kind of a, I would say like, you know, in every conference we'll have one topic for that for sure. But let's try to see this in a little different perspective. I want to talk about in today's discussion, you know, and let's keep it interactive. Feel free to ask me questions if you have anything. Focus on three things. The first part, which is very important, is I see a lot of our senior members out here. All of you agree to one point that how audit used to be 15 to 20 years back and what we see today has totally transformed. It is no more the same thing what we used to see for a very long time. But what is more interesting in this one is audit has transformed, business have transformed, have auditors transformed themselves? Because see, we need to understand one very important thing. Technology is a kind of a different stream altogether which keeps working all together. But we need to understand was changing around us. And I would say, when we are discussing this thing today, we are on a very interesting crossroad where we can actually understand what is changing. I'll try to tell you one very interesting example. Like, I come, I'm actually, uh, you know, it's always a pleasure to be in Kolkata because I am born and brought up in Assam. So, you know, it's very close to that. So anyone who's from that remote part of Northeast Kolkata is like Babylon, you know, you have to come there. This is like the in place, happening place and all thing. Now, you know, my Karm Bhumi is more of South India, but I love coming to Kolkata. The one thing is the sweets for sure, and you can see from my tummy <laughs> why I love coming to Kolkata. I'll tell you one very interesting thing, and you would have heard from my discussion that uh, I, was, I used to work for Infosys for a lifetime. And one thing a lot of people don't know, I was, in fact, before I left Infosys, something around 2014, 15, I was a program manager for TDS CPC. So now I'm not anymore with them. It's already a long time. So any issues with that, don't tell me. But two, till 2015, I was with Infi. And a lot of my friends knows this. And I hope you know we had a very interesting thing which happened when the ITR was revised. You remember the time when ITR was revised? And all CAs were very frustrated. Sabko ekdam matlab na kisi ko gali dene ka man kar tha. Now there is no phone number of Infosys, no phone number of income tax department. So my friends found out a novel way. Ki wo frustration nikalna hai to kahan nikalna? The best option is call up Anand. Jitni bhi gali Infosys ko deni ho, usko naam leke de do. Ki dekho, Infosys ye kar raha hai, bakwas company hai, kuch nahi jaante hai. Achha khasa system chal raha tha. Why did you change it? Right? That was the point everyone said. Do you all agree to that point that someone says here, yeah, the system must chal raha tha, kyun change kiya? Kisne bola tha change karne ke liye? And Infosys got a lot of brick bat, F finance ministry got involved, you have all this kind of things happening, and people said this was a problem. And at that time, because ultimately they are your friends, so agar dost log gali dete to koi baat hi sunna padta hai. So I used to hear that talks, okay, this is there, that is there, all this kind of things used to happen. But the day they released the new system and they released the AIS, I called up all my friends back. In AIS, have you noticed that there are information about SSE which many times they are not even disclosing it to the chartered account. What they have done, they have linked all that information 
to now one place. Now the question arises, and shall I tell you something very interesting? I have my friends in Infi who are telling me, AIS, what you are seeing right now is the version one. They have 27 versions coming out of that. And there are going to be a face manner development of all of these things. Agar abhi pehla version mein itna information hai, can you imagine how much information would be there by the time you reach version 27? Huh? This is a four year plan. Four year they will be actually coming out with 27 versions, which is plan. Now, if you see that, think of that. We do 44 AB audits. Can I say, I'm just trying to play a devil's advocate and please don't take me wrong. Can I say that what is the value add CAs are doing? You're not doing any value add. Whatever information the government wanted to know, which you are giving an attestation, they already know that. What is the value add you are bringing to the table? In fact, they are planning to even basically automate the whole point out that they will actually give you a return process. You can just check it up that one. Now, what you will do? Now, think. Now, I'm just trying to be very playing the devil's advocate. Don't take me wrong. I'm a charter accountant myself. I understand. But then the question will arise is, I remember when I was doing my articleship, I did my articleship in a small and medium firm. And uh, if you have, it will, whether you are a big CA or a small CA will depend on number of files kiske paas jada hai. Isn't that used to be the thing? Kiske paas mein income tax ki jada file hai? A mood question they will ask, kitni files aapke paas mein? And that used to be a big thing. I remember there was no CA and my father was a businessman in a small place in Assam, a place called Gualpara. So there used to be a CA who used to come on, you know, weekend from Guwahati and bola nahi ek file to dena padega and they will actually do that. That was the time which was there. Now think of a situation where we are called as chartered accountant. I hope all of you know why we are called chartered accountant, right? Or still thinking why are we called chartered accountant? Sir, Sir, why are we called chartered accountant? Why not certified accountant? What is so charter about us? Sir, why are we called chartered accountant? No, no. Just because of statutory compliances, no. Even a certified accountant can do it. Let's, let's ask a moot question then. What is the difference between a 10 year old BCom, 10 year experience BCom, and a fresh CA? What is the value add you are bringing to the table? Huh? Signature. Nature of what, sir? Sign no, signature, sir. <laughs> a bit digital. I said. Ah, that is a body, statutory body. And, but just becoming ICA member, is it that the thing we are called chartered accountant? Huh? Okay. In a true and fair view. Okay, good one. But auditors don't do the account presentation, right? That is supposed to be done by the management. That is a, another question, so we'll debate it. That is deep. So if you know, East India Company was a chartered company. Are you aware of that? We are called chartered accountant because this, if you see the English law, when there is a delegation of authority, from the people, the sovereign power is moved to someone. That's the reason. Someone said signature. The signature power is not like, uh, okay, all of you senior members here, tell me, do you remember what was your first signature which you did when you passed C and what is the signature you're doing now? Change ho gaya na, sir? It's totally change. But the point is, there is a delegation of power from the authority to us. Now, in that given situation, let's try to understand a fundamental thing. Audit what we call today. Auditors, how we represent ourselves. And the technology, which has become a disruptor today, all across the thing. And here, I want to take it, the check-in part out here. If any of our young chartered accountant who see, you know, I remember when I used to do for your uh, Article ship for a small and medium firm, we used to be given this pen, red, blue, green. And wo bola jata tha ki hamari firm ka jo tick hai, wo 45 degrees right me jayega. This is our firm's speciality, which is there. That I used to do in year 2000. And I see even there is happening today. Now, we have not changed. We are still, oh, parampara, 
that movie is there right i forgot anushasan and what is the third dialogue ha wo usme hum atke reh gaye the whole world has moved out ha mohabbate ka dialogue hai ekdam sahi hai wohi that is the place where we are we are not understanding the train is moving very fast and time has come to look beyond income tax and gst tell me one thing out here i always ask this question to all my friends anyone wants to write ca examination again here pakka nahi kisi ko bhi likhna hai wapas ha fail fail ka to pata nahi ha bank okay sir sir want to write exam sir you are not done it yet na hum mai repeater ke baat kar raha hu sir so no one anyone wants to write the examination i don't think i will never write it see examination again because i think it's recorded right okay i think institute ek badmashi karta hamare sath mein foundation mein sabko pass kar deta have you noticed this one and i also cleared my foundation first attempt and then i flung six times in my inter so then i realized <laughs> ca is not easy you imagine i actually did my ca from bangalore so i moved to bangalore i was my parents also moved there the only time i used to go to temple before ca was on my birthday my mother used to take me to ganesh temple by the time i came to ca final i used to walk to tirupati ab kabhi gaye tirupati walk karke you have to climb 9 kilometers now why i am telling you you have done one of the toughest course which is in this domain of finance why should we still think ourselves we can only do this part you should be thinking i can do anything If I can do CA like बाकी चीजें तो चिल्लर होना चाहिए राइट दैट इज वन ऑफ द एरिया विच आवर चार्टर अकाउंटेंट ऑलवेज आई सॉरी आई एम बींग लिटल रफ विथ यू गाइज बट दैट इज द ट्रूथ द मोमेंट टेक्नोलॉजी वर्ड आता है ना सी एज स्विच ऑफ देयर ब्रेन्स कि हमें तो पढ़ना ही नहीं है वी डोंट वॉन्ट टू इट इट मे बी समथिंग टू डू विद दैट यू नो इसका दैट वन सब्जेक्ट वॉज देयर विच आवर इंस्टीट्यूट हैड इट बट do you agree or not whenever it comes to technology we say it's complex i think it is easier than gst i don't understand gst still <laughs> it is easier than that one so let's try to understand this three things audit is no more the same why it is no more the same i'll show you two examples and i am ready to debate it up if you have a counter view i would love to take your counter view why do i say there has been there Do you remember there was one case law जिसको हम लोग सुन सुन के मतलब दस मार्क का आता था हमेशा ऑडिटर इज अश टॉक नॉट अ ब्लड आउट रिमेंबर कैन एनी वन टेल मी विच ईयर वॉज दैट इट वॉज अ किंगस्टन कॉटन मिल केस एटीन नाइनटी टू विच ईयर वी आर राइट नाउ टू जीरो टू थ्री इफ यू आर स्टिल गोइंग एंड गोइंग फॉर दैट केस लॉ वी आर इन अ मेसी सिचुएशन i would suggest if you get time go and check out the levent case which has actually deloitte was asked to pay 84.8 million dollar in us uh, in canada sorry not us and there the judge directly said no 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 wo gaye and canada is a commonwealth country if that happens here it is going to happen here audit has evolved we are not evolving out here and that is the big thing i am sorry to say on a average i am actually getting calls from especially mufassil area in karnataka someone because i also teach one area which is forensic at institute and they said oh my name has been removed from the member uh, list and then it was suspended and then it has put back now so would i get my you know what is that mef uh how visibility from when i passed in 2000 or it will be from now what people are not understanding is we still are doing the new age audits with the tools of the past and that has to change i want to show you this example and ask you how would you audit this one this business four years ago we started to wonder what would shopping look like if you could walk into a store grab what you want and just go What if we could weave the most advanced machine learning, computer vision and AI into the very fabric of a store so you never have to wait in line? No lines, no checkouts, no registers. Welcome 
to Amazon Go. Use the Amazon Go app to enter. Then put away your phone and start shopping. It's really that simple. Take whatever you like. Anything you pick up is automatically added to your virtual cart. If you change your mind about that cupcake, just put it back. Our technology will update your virtual cart automatically. So, how does it work? We used computer vision, deep learning algorithms, and sensor fusion, much like you'd find in self-driving cars. We call it Just Walk Out Technology. Once you've got everything you want, you can just go. When you leave, our Just Walk Out technology adds up your virtual cart and charges your Amazon account. Your receipt is sent straight to the app, and you can keep going. Amazon Go. No lines, no checkout. No, seriously. I would say uh, you can check it out. This I actually visited in 2018, uh, one of the Amazon Go store. This was in Seattle. And that time it was one store. Right now, if you go and search on Google, there are more than nine stores out there. And they are actually going out there. This, that's the thing I'm telling you. So, all 2017 they came. And that time it was first experience store was in Seattle. First experience store. I went with one of my colleagues who works in Amazon. And he showed me the most interesting thing. We use his scanner to, for me also entering and him also entering. Whatever I was adding it, it was going to his cart. So can you imagine there are two people going and the machine is taking care of everything which is happening. There have been cases of there. But they are actually going at a different phase altogether. Now the question arises is if this kind of things are there to be audited and future. In fact, I don't know, today on CNBC if you are listening to that they had actually done a, I attended that conference which happened in Delhi. The CII DX conference which was there. And there was a chairman of Nestle who was actually sitting there and he said, we, I know I don't understand 10, you know, 90% of the technology what my team tells me. But we are very confident that this is going to change it up. Because they are trying to trace where the masalas have come from Nestle. That is the level of tracing they are trying to use technology. And they say it's not possible otherwise or that. You can actually see the repeat telecast. I think it's going to come today evening on CNBC. But it was very interesting. There is a lot of change happening. And you see this recent... Corporate failures, there are questions being raised. I know, uh, sir rightly said, true and fair. We all say what? True and fair. But only people sitting in this room understand that we are actually giving not absolute assurance. We are giving reasonable. Who understand this? You and me. Do the public understand that? SVP failure. Just 19 days back, KPMG has given a report. In fact, I'm not talking about only Indian situations. So, it's a, you know, uh, transformation is going to happen anywhere. They actually gave a report, everything is hanky-donky. And what happened, just 19 days later, there's a failure of a bank. Then the question will arise, why should, like, please understand one basic thing. What value add are we trying to give it to the client? Shall we ask that question? What value add are we giving to the client? Because all these failures are actually pointing figure. I know you know, but don't you think audit has to change, or not just change, give a little different perspective altogether. And here, it becomes understand, uh, sorry, 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 my bad. Did I jump the one minute? This is sometime it happens. Okay. <laughs> Let me go forward and talk about the auditors. And this is one thing which I want to talk about the auditors. I was talking about audit till now. But if you talk about the auditors, there is also something which is changing out here. And I've been talking about this most of the time. That as auditors, we need to be someone who understand technology and not walk away from that. Not to be the Luddites. And that's a term which is used in a very bad way for people who actually struggle with technology. We have to adapt it especially the youngs. You have to come out with the mindset that, okay, if I am a chartered accountant, either I go into industry or I just, you know, do income tax and GST. How many of you know there are so many opportunities which are there 
in the field of data science, machine learning, in the area of cyber security. There is a shortage of people. Just because we are not doing it, someone else has to come into that. You know, with all due respect, I hope no engineers here, right? All, all the engineers are actually trying to become like, you know, we, I take a half grade paper on fraud analytics at uh, IAM Bangalore. Plus, I also teach one subject called audit and analytics at BML Munjal. This is a you know, full grade paper and this is a half grade paper. Maximum people who are getting into this are engineers. They say, oh, this is interesting. We can do it faster. We know that. They have to just learn the fundamentals of our area. If we don't learn that, someone else learns it. So ultimately, that requirement is going to get filled, whether you like it or not. And this becomes literally important. I have talked about this multiple times, but I, uh, and again, I'm getting, I'm telling you, I'm not getting any commission from Richard Suskin for promoting his book. But I would highly recommend you to read this book if you get a time. The Future of Profession, you should read this book. And I'm not telling it, but Richard Suskin actually says that most of the profession, especially lawyers, accountants, and our medicos, these guys are acting as, you know what? Any idea? Mafias. <laughs> as per him, he says, why should only this guy be able to do that area. You have to be part of bar council to be able to fight a case. I hope you have seen these cases where chat GPT, we'll discuss about the technology part later, have actually made a very nice, you know, kind of uh, what we call it a petition, which was actually accepted in the US High Court. They actually did that. They tried it up using that. Now the question arises, as I was your lawyer, hona chahiye, bar council ka member, hona chahiye. Tell me one thing, whatever we learned in our C8, and this is actually an officially survey done by Institute of Chartered Accountants of England and Wales, not our institute. They said a CA who actually learns whatever during his course, in his whole life, he will be using more, not more than 18% of what has been taught to him. So we are taught a lot of things. Do you remember butterfly spread in how many call option, how many put option? Only one, two people, three people. I mean, two call, two put options are there, but anyway. The point is that we learn so much of things. Are we learning the relevant thing which is there? And that is what Future of Profession talks about. And similarly, this, you know, the latest version is going to be released in May 2023. You just wait for that, the Future of Job Report. They're actually coming out with the next version. And if you see the Future of Job Report, I hope some of you would have gone through it. Just see where they have put Decreasing demand. Accountants and auditors, where we are being put on the right hand side. These are the jobs worldwide. This is not India version I'm talking about. This is a worldwide version where they are clearly saying, boss, there's no demand for us. It's, it said the demand is decreasing. It's not going away. It is going to be there. But can you see on the left hand side, what are the new things which are coming up? It's the sunrise sector. And that is evolving like anything. So. The reason for that is we all call the fourth industrial revolution. And that technology has changed. So let's talk about how technology is growing at a faster pace. At a pace which you and me cannot even comprehend because of the changes. This is like an example of disruption we talk about. And this disruption is basically, I see a lot of uh, people who would have worked in financial services. Can you see this here, uh, UBS trading floor, how it was in 2005 and what it became 2016? In fact, this trading floor, you'll be shocked to know it has been closed down now. It is no more there. And this happened, you know why? Only because of one technology. Just like, you remember there was a kind of thing called pager? How many of the young people have never used a pager or seen a pager? Not seen or used a pager. Never used it. Oh my God. But Pushpa me dekha bas khali. Pushpa movie, you have seen it, right? Huh, they used, uh, but never used it. That was an industry. Huh? Huh, I still have one of the Modi with that pager. And I don't know if you remember, sir, yahan pe rakte usko itna. Jitna bada pager, utna shop. It used to be like a big shop. Huh? Ki mera pager mein teen line aata hai. Teen line ka pager hai mera. I used to be a shop. That was an industry. And the moment only one you know, technology came, SMS, 
it was finished. Think of this industry also what we are seeing it got finished because of only one thing. We call that as you know what? Algo trading. No? Algo trading. You don't require so many people. They said they were using all computers. You don't require so many traders. Algo trading all of you know better than me. Zeroda me aajkal 30 rupay per day me mil rahe. You can do algo trading. And that one technology killed the whole industry of traders, licensed traders and all the things. Now, what I'm trying to bring out here is, sorry. I'm not sure about it, whether algo trading has killed the... I'll tell you, algo trading has... Uh, no, no, it was on a different side. See, earlier where I had to require it, if let's say I am Goldman Sachs, I have to place an order of 6 lakh share of TCS. The moment I put a block order, what will happen? Yeah, the market will fall down. Not fall. Oh, Zoom. Right. So it will go. So I used to, that when I was to be in Goldman Sachs, we had an office in, uh, if you come to Mumbai, Mumbai we had a trading office. We used to have different traders sitting there. Each trader will be given that you will take only a small block of that. Yes. Now I require so many traders to be doing it up. That is a different area. Huh. Can you really do the trading for... Uh, that, that is a different features of algo. Yes. There are different features of algo. I am talking about I don't require so many people to do that kind of thing. Punching. That's punching. the point. That's what is going to be that. Now if you hear that thing in technology, see this word which is you know coming from World Economic Forum chief. He has rightly said and I really appreciate it. He said, we are on a spring where it will change the way we live, work and relate to one another. And this is very important, guys. I am telling you, in fact, in one of my slides, I have said, this are the technology and so on. The reason is very important. Do you know, chat GPT came and it has just shook up the whole thing. Digital marketing, concept of digital marketing has totally changed. The people, I had a, you know, some relative of mine and she got a pretty good job in Canada doing digital marketing and now they are actually thinking that, okay, maybe they don't have that kind of future. One small technology translating and please understand one thing, you know, a lot of people think job loss, job loss, it's not job loss. There is a requirement of what we call it as people who can work with this. When Excel came, did Excel took away the jobs? No, but it requires people who can work with Excel. You can't work anymore with that books and other things. That is changing. That is exactly what we need to understand. And if you see, this is how fast they have adapted. And you should see the chat GPT. I have not added chat GPT. They got 100 million users in 21 days flat. It's more faster. You know, word of mouth. And that is the change which is happening. That there is a kind of a technology which is coming. When telephone took 75 years, here we have one technology coming because there is an enabling force. How many of you have tried the Airtel new four, uh, that 5G version? Anyone has tried it? You have, no, not the Geo, uh, Airtel one. Which one, Geo or Airtel you tried? Airtel. Ah, what, at, uh, how much time it takes to download a movie, sir? Oh, you didn't download a movie? <laughs> it doesn't take thing, but I actually did one thing, like I have a YouTube subscription, and I had a two hours movie which was there, which I wanted to watch in the flight. So I actually just press it, like download it to that. It did it in less than 30 seconds. Imagine two hours movie, less than 30 seconds. That was the speed. I was like, oh, amazingly impressed. So I don't know when 5G comes, what are the new initiatives that are going to come? There is going to be completely different thing. They are enabling technologies. And this is how the technology and humans are evolving. Uh, this picture got a lot of thing. I hope you have remembered this picture of Mark Zuckerberg <laughs> passing through all these people who were actually immersed into metaverse. I know there are a lot of other questions on metaverse. I don't want to talk. There are a lot of people now saying how to account for metaverse and all things. There are new things coming up. But we'll not discuss that. But do you see how we are actually getting hooked into the technology? How the future generations are going to be hooked onto the technology? It's very tough. The two years of that thing has one accelerated the whole technology use, guys. And that exactly is trying to understand from Neuralink. All of you have heard about the Neuralink thing, right? Elon Musk investment? Yeah? So how many of you have seen that monkey video? Listen to this one, then we'll discuss.
This is Pager. He's a nine-year-old macaque who had a Neuralink placed in each side of his brain about six weeks ago. If you look carefully, you can see that the fur on his head hasn't quite fully grown back yet. He's learned to interact with a computer for a tasty banana smoothie delivered through a straw. We can interact with the Neuralinks simply by pairing them to an iPhone, just as you might pair your phone to a Bluetooth speaker. The links record from more than 2,000 electrodes implanted in the regions of Page's motor cortex that coordinate hand and arm movements. Neurons in this region modulate their activity with intended hand movement. For example, some might become more active when he moves his hand up and others when he moves it to the right. By recording from many neurons and feeding their activity into a decoder algorithm, we are able to predict Page's intended hand movements in real time. First, we calibrate the decoder by recording neural activity as Pager uses the joystick to move a cursor to targets presented on the screen. As he's playing this game, we are wirelessly streaming, in real time, the firing rates from thousands of neurons to a computer. Using these data, we calibrate the decoder by mathematically modeling the relationship between patterns of neural activity and the different joystick movements they produce. After only a few minutes of calibration, we can use the output from the decoder to move the cursor instead of the joystick. Pages still moves the joystick out of habit, but as you can see, it's unplugged. He's controlling the cursor entirely with decoded neural activity. Our goal is to enable a person with paralysis to use a computer or phone with their brain activity alone. Because they wouldn't be able to move a joystick, they would calibrate the decoder by imagining hand movements to targets. One of the things the Neuralinks allow Pager to do is to play his favorite video game, Pong. To control his paddle on the right side of the screen, Pager simply thinks about moving his hand up or down. We've removed the joystick altogether. Now that he's up to speed, let's increase the difficulty and see how well Pager can play with the Neuralink. As you can see, Pager is amazingly good at mind pong. He's focused, and he's playing entirely of his own volition. It's not magic. The reason Neuralink works is because it's recording and decoding electrical signals from the brain. Great game, Pager. And what better reward for a monkey than a banana? We still have challenges spanning many fields of engineering, so if you're good at solving hard problems and want to change people... So guys, I hope you understood that video. They actually implant a chip. You can go to the Neuralink website. You will chip how it is. They have already implanted. First, they started with uh, basically ships, and they have upgraded to monkey, because monkey is very close to, as a evolution, to humans and they are actually seeing that first they will train it up but then it is actually going and controlling things only using what brain activities now you may think oh this is very futuristic and all the thing this is a video is around two years old video so don't you think in two years they would have done a lot of things by that time you should go and check their website they have actually put a lot of interesting thing out there what I'm trying to bring out is not about this, but don't you think, if you know the company OpenAI, they have come with this today, but they started the work on that seven years back. It took seven years to build up the thing what we are seeing it today. There are a lot of other technology in the new advanced space which is changing. Now, think of what we need to do. I actually remember one very interesting thing which happened with me. Uh, recently, I actually did a training program for IOC, and this was from behalf of IM Bangalore. So this happened at Gurgaon. Uh, in, in IOC has a one very interesting institution called IIPM, Indian Institute of Petroleum Management. It is in Gurgaon. So I went there, and uh, we were actually staying. A couple of professors from IIM, we all staying there. At the reception, they have a very interesting mural, 
which I really liked. They have actually put, see, IOC is a Fortune 500 company. They have a put a very interesting mural there, change dot, 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 before you are forced to change. That was at the reception. Imagine, this is like a message going to them, saying you have to be proactive in changing yourself before you are forced to change. Ultimately, everyone will have to come out with that. But the proactiveness, and that same thing which is there, people who actually focus on the past and the present. As chartered accountant, as a professional, as a fraternity, our past was amazing, our present is good. But are we missing out on the future? And what is the future we are talking about? We are talking about disruption because of technology. And a lot of people think disruption is bad. I think disruption is good. Disruption allows you to leverage your skill set. As chartered accountant, what is our biggest skill set? We understand business better than anyone. Our functional knowledge is one of the best which can happen. And here, we need to understand, can we bring radical transformation in business. This is the word which is the definition if you have heard about digital for, uh, transformation. They said technology to improve, radically improve. Radical would be not just 5, 10 improvement in the way we are looking it up. Imagine 80 percent, 90 percent improvement in the things we do that. Can that be done? Can that be thought of? And this is the another very interesting survey which was done by MIT Sloan which I really understood very interestingly. They said, everyone talks about that. Every company is talking about that. They know this, it's happened. But less than 50 persons are executing on that one. And that is the challenge. It's not that you guys don't know. I'm not giving you any new news. You guys are already observing it, seeing it, and doing it. You're saying something, sir? Yes. Yeah. The way in which the change is taking place. Yes. Perfect. So it's something like this. I remember, yes, sir. Huh? Already released, yeah. And Ch Ch GPT-4 is better than GPT-3 because the version is more upgradable. Uh, I don't know if you know, the whole thing was, Ch Jet GPT-3 was woke, more woke. And they had data only till uh, 2016 data they had. So now we have more data, that's for sure. Now, huh? No, no, even uh, yesterday, I don't know if you know, Google has released the API on the generative AI already. Okay, now I'll tell you what is that. Have you heard about the term called the VUCA world? Volatile, uncertain, this was actually an American military term. Huh? Yeah, the, they used to actually use the word, how do you survive in the VUCA world? It is going to be volatile. It is going to be uncertain. It is going to be a lot of issues which are going to come. But the point which I'm trying to say is, you have to know that the life, you know, what we call it as a life uh, of life cycle of a whole technology is not going to be the way it was there earlier. Earlier, tell me one thing. How many of you have used one search engine called Bing? Have you used Bing? Okay. I would request you to use Bing from now onwards, at least continuously for 45 days. I'll tell you why. See the feature change happening. Extensive feature changes are happening. On an average, they are releasing every a feature every one week. Means the complete change. They have now an option called chat, which is based on chat GPT because they have invested a lot of money on it. They are challenging and Google is in a kind of a right now defense mode because they are not able to figure it out that. All that is going to happen. But the first step which is going to be there is the accelerators of disruption. You need to understand. Tell me one thing, if I use a word data analytics, everyone has a different picture. It is something like, in Excel also I can do data analytics, in Google Sheet also I can do data analytics, or I can do data analytics at a level of uh, multi-million data line items and all things. It can be anything, but the area remains the same. So let's try to focus on what we call it as, have you heard about this term? I think it's a very interesting term. I also learned it up. It's called the attack surface. Attack surface is a concept which is a very interesting concept, they said, that there is this much opportunities there. 
Can you target all of that? No, you can't do it. You focus on an area which you can focus on. Like I would highly recommend you to read one book. It's a management book. You know, after coming into academics, I have started reading a lot of books. How many of you heard this term called blue ocean strategy? No, only one person. Sir, can you tell us what is there in that? Or just no or read? More of blue sky, it's a blue ocean and red ocean we talk about. Okay. So the blue ocean strategy book, I would highly recommend to all the CAs who want to pivot right now. If you are thinking seriously, ki nahi, thoda naya area mein jate hai, ye to chal hai, let's try to think of that. Or you want to make a career out of that, read the book. It's a very interesting thing. It says, people focus on red ocean. Red ocean is that ocean where there is a lot of competition. Everyone is cutting each other down. You go to an area which is totally a blue ocean, which no one else is doing it, or very few people are doing it, and you bring your unique ideas out there. I'll show you some of the examples of that. These are, I call it the new accelerators and disruptors. What are these? Okay, sorry, it came like this, okay. So we have some of the technology disruptor. I will use it up more of AI, not just AI, but I would use the concept of generative AI. What is this concept of generative AI? Anyone? It can read like a paragraph. Uh huh. So what would be a situation, in fact, I was discussing with Sumit at the break, what would be a situation if, imagine, there is an AI which can actually go through the tally, do the complete review, and put an audit report with exceptions. Think of a situation like that. And you may think, nahi, nahi, ye hone wala nahi hai. let me show you something. The problem is here. Okay. Uh, let me share my screen. So uh, the problem with chat GPT most of the time is it has already reached its full capacity, so it will not be there. Okay, But you can do one more thing. Let me see if it is working. It is night in US, so very less people should be working on that. Or I can try to show you something alternative, which is using the chat GPT. API already. There's a server a service called u.com. So let me just go and ask it a simple thing like write a Python code to send mass mail. Okay? I I I don't know about any of that Python as a programming language. I am just telling it write a program to just do that for me. So can it work on that? Oh, it's asking me to sign in. Uh, I don't want to sign in. Wait a minute. No, thanks. OK, I will remove this up. Just a minute. Uh, everyone is now going, OK. So, okay, now can you see this is generating a kind of a code in Python for me? And I will challenge you to do it multiple times. If you try to do multiple times, it will not give you the same code. And it is basically doing it based on what we call it as learning it has done from the whole World Wide Web and the data which has been provided. It is learning it. It is, at, okay, if I have to use a very crude example, in CA examination, you don't have to smart. You need to appear to be smart for the three hours. How you write your presentations and all things, that is there. This machine basically crawl it up across the thing and try to generate it up. If I go to chat GPT, I can do more advanced things than that. But only thing is that I need to have a login credentials and most of the time it is not up and running. So why is this happening? All these things are happening because of one reason, first and foremost. 
don't you think the explosion of data today is much more? We write blogs, we do publish so much of data online, which was never available. Today, if there are people who are playing in the stock market, they're using machine learning for training the models and all the things. Was you had access to that kind of data earlier? Never. <coughs> if you see, there is a very interesting statement by Google. They said that the amount of data which was generated from the dawn of the civilization in 2005, dawn of the civilization is when humans started painting the caves. From that to 2005, what data was generated, we are generating every two days. And that is one of the key things which is there. How many of you have gone to a site called data.gov.in? Anyone has been to the site? You have been there. Others, never, no one has tried it? I suggest you try this data.gov.in. Very interesting website. Government of India has published all the government data on that. IRDA has published all the data out there. You have huge amount of data. They said, Aap batao kya karoge is mein? We are not going to basically have control, centralized control over the data. You try what you want to do. Wahan.org, if you see, has that not changed the whole thing today? Insurance companies knows if you go to a police catch hold of you, he will just put your vehicle number, he knows everything, whether you have insurance or not. There was a time when people used to take the insurance copy, <laughs> change the date. <laughs> huh? Pollution they can check. They know all this data about you, which was not a kind of a possibility earlier. And same thing is this one. This slide took me some time to make, but I actually have tried to get all this technology, which are mostly open source technology. We call this as democratization of technology. Earlier, only few people have access to all the data on everything which is there. Today, you have multiple people knowing what they can do with this. And that is a kind of a power which makes everyone. Have you, uh, you know, heard about a book called The World is Flat? It was a New York best time seller. It came something around 2012. And they said in the time to come, you cannot say that I'm sitting in US, that's why I have an advantage. Or I'm sitting in Europe, that's why I have going to advantage. Knowledge, wherever it is, you can actually do stuff from anywhere, anytime, anyhow. And that is what they predicted in 2012. It's coming up right now, 10 years took, but it's going out there. And the world has actually become flat. You can be sitting here and do, you know, use cases development for clients anywhere out there in the world. And I want to show you not just Gyan, let's try to see what is actually people doing. This is the AI streams which all of you have heard about, right? Because AI is very big. Let's not only talk it from auditor's perspective. So all these AI streams we all know about. Yes or no? Just say, you saw it, I hope some of you use Siri and Siri, how many people use Siri here? No one use Siri? Only? Okay, how many of you have an Apple iPhone? Okay, and how many of you don't use Siri? Why you don't use Siri? Matlab, you are like very rich person. You are paying for a service which you are not using. Matlab, kyo? Matlab, seriously, we should be using it up. I'll tell you, on the use of technology, I want to just take a diversion. I learned one very interesting thing. And I learned this from, have you heard about a gentleman called Dr. Devi Shetty? Aapne suna unke baare mein? Kis liye famous hai ho? Heart surgeon. But aap unko, he was actually talking in the Bangalore Tech Fest. Wo technology ke fest mein kya kar rahe hai? He gave one idea and I'm telling you, I was shocked. Unse pehle mujhe bhi nahi pata tha ki aisa kar sakte. So he was actually talking in, a, in this Tech Fest. It is something on 2017-18 ki baat hai. And he said, we are facing, you know, people talk about technology, 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 but no one use even 20% of the technology properly. And his point was very true. He said, I had a big problem that every heart surgery I do, I have to create a transcription of that. Earlier, what he used to do is, he used to basically dictate it up, it will be recorded, and one of his assistants will type it. And many times, these people used to do a lot of mistake in the understanding of what he's doing. So he said, can I use my mobile phone? And have you seen in your mobile phone keyboard, there is a, once, yeah, the typing is there. Ha, transcribe the whole thing up. And he started doing on the way home, because he said, I always get 15, 20 minutes, I'll just transcribe it, and then I'll give it to him, and he, you know, grammatical error, he will fix it up. 
then he started getting one problem there in this transcription. You know what was the error? There are some medical terms which are tongue twisters and the pronunciations are very different. Like when, you know, if I ask Siri or Alexa my name, my last name Jangit, it will someone say Janjid, new, new terms, they will bring it up there. All the time it happens with me. Especially when I go to US, I have a big time because they will say Mr. the last name. So the, they will bring out whatever comes to their mind, their pronunciations. Now, same thing used to happen. So he came out with a very interesting thing. You know what he did? He asked one of his assistant to say all heart-related terms, just feed them as a contact in my mobile phone. Are you seeing the hack here? This is a very interesting thing. If you understood this point, please understand. He knows he has a problem. He got a solution very quickly. You just add it as a contact. If you have contact add, then the will pronunciation. Are you seeing the, how people are using technology? Think of us. How can we use that? Next time you are doing a BRS, do you trust the BRS? I have a question. I'm sorry to use that. But have we not learned from what happened with PwC? How many of our we are still taking from the client their bank statement and based on the bank statement we are doing it? Don't you think it's high time that we say, boss, I don't trust your bank statement. Wo FDR bana lete hain. Satyam, they made the FDR, so bank statement do kuch bhi nahi hai. There have been a lot of cases, CAs have gone for a trouble either because of two reasons. Either they were never professional skepticism was missing or they were not understanding the technology. When I say not understanding the technology, there are a lot of things. And those are the things which we need to understand. So I can't go into everything here, but this is a big area on AI where you can do it, like speech to you know, image recognition and all things. I have one question. How many of you have used image recognition in your audits right now? Anyone has used image recognition in audit? No? OK, Google Lens, who has used it? Who's for it? Translation for it? Who's for it? See, I am in South India, and I have most of my clients in that area. I don't know Tamil. If I have to read a Tamil document, I don't, I'm not an expert in that. We are using it extensively, and not just one page. We use a Google Lens API to translate, you know how many pages of document? 34,000, because this was the kind of a, some charge sheet was going. 34,000 of the translation with accuracy level of 98%. Do you know how much time it took her to give us the translation? You will be shocked. 17 minutes, that's all. Can you imagine how much I would have done it up? Now, that's something which we need to understand. Let me focus on only one point because uh, yeah, we have 15 minutes left, right? Uh, so I have told him to give me an indicator the moment I have 15 minutes left. So how many of you have actually used machine learning? Uh, let me talk about that. Let me give the next 15 minutes on this. Anyone has heard this term machine learning? No? No, OK. Uh, Machine learning is already there, and you don't even know it yet. Even in chat GPT-3, you are training the machine. Do you know, chat GPTs are not fooled to give their whole technology free of cost to the whole janta. They wanted their trade model to be trained. It is like what our Reliance people did it with us. All of you, how many of you got GeoSIM, free GeoSIM? I also got free GeoSIM. Come on, don't be shy of telling it. I like free things. <laughs> All of you got it? Now, I have a question. Do you remember when the first free GeoSIM was given? It used to be unlimited. You can have as amount of data you want to download, you can download. And people used to think, Reliance is crazy. Why are they? Huh. But a lot of people don't know only one thing which I want to share with you. That, that free SIM, if you are actually installing on your machine, or mobile phone, your mobile phone battery will get out very fast. And people never notice that. Actually, you were doing free testing for Geo. Free of cost, you were the people who were testing it of that. Now, imagine the same concept being used in machine learning. So we are talking about self-driving cars. We are talking about places where we are actually going and figuring it out, cancerous tissues in any kind of image and all the thing. Now, imagine the same thing happening in image and handwriting recognition versus 
where anomalies which we try to detect in data can be done using machine learning. So fundamentally, how does it differ? Let me give you a very quick understanding. Let's not go too tech on that. Whenever anyone has done programming, I remember when we were uh, long, long ago, there used to be a subject called SADP. I don't know how many of you have written that. Remember? Uh, everyone remembers that. And it used to be a bad subject, right, sir? Not a bad subject? <laughs> but, sir, haan, but us mein ek bahut interesting thing hota tha. Aap mein se kitne logo ko pata hai ki SADP mein institute question poochta tha, write a basic program, write a COBOL program. Examination mein aata tha, sir, 15 marks ka question. No compiler, dimaag se compile karna hai. But I was very happy that our institute was very ahead of the time. He was, write a code, we'll try to see how you're trying to work it up. That was the time when I remember when I used to go for the classes, they used to say, if you have to write the code in COBOL, think logically. What should be step one, step two, step three, step four, step five. And after that, you connect to the data source and you get the result. Machine learning is different. Machine learning is saying, I don't want you to connect to any data source. Just give me the data. I will figure it out ever myself. What it is doing is, machine, you give the data set for training, or something like, how many of you have used macro? Excel may submit macro to use kyoga. If you have used macro, what happens? The machine writes the code in Visual Basic. Right? Imagine the same thing happening here. The machine reads the data and writes the code itself. So, what it can help you do? It will do complete data set feature extraction and tell you how it is happening. What is the key things which is going on? And what is the algorithm or the logic which is there? I thought I'll show you an actual example so you can understand it better, OK? So how it is being used in audit risk and compliances? People are using it in accounts payables. They are trying to see fraud and revenue leakage happening in accounts payable. They are trying to see it in we, you know, prediction of bad debts. Because if you see a bad debts, there is going to be a kind of a pattern which will be there before account become bad debts. They are trying to see it in procurement spend. Oh, this is one big area. I don't know how many of you have heard about that. Spend analytics using machine learning. Oh my God, it's, a, it's actually exploding that area. Spend analytics is something like that. Let's say I have 50 factories all across India, and I think that expensive factories are going to be Mumbai, Delhi, or Kolkata. But actually, you will see that, oh my god, my Jamshedpur factory is very expensive in terms of the cost of production and yield. Now, if I just go with one parameters, I'm not going to understand up. Can I take n parameters and try to analyze it up? That kind of things which are being done. Collusion with vendors, predicting non-performing assets. I was very happy to hear one very interesting question which was raised in Karnataka State Chartered Accountant Association uh, thing. They said, you are expecting chartered accountant to go and do a reclassification of NPA. Don't you think all the banks have such a huge softwares and other things? Can't they do themselves? They are talking about that point. This was a question which was raised there. And this is happening already where organizations are starting doing it. And last one, let me show you an example of that. t &E expenditure frauds. Now that is one area which we all know is happening in many places. And that is an area where you cannot do that. So I just thought, this is an application. I hope you've heard about one software from SAP called Conquer. Conquer is a, you know, application on which all the TNE expenses, travel and entertainment expenses are going to come. Now, think of this one. On the left-hand side, whatever you are seeing, these are analytics. What I say analytics is, you are seeing something like Benford Law, you are seeing something on junior employee incurring more than senior employees. These are exception to the policies. But what you are trying to do here is, this exception to the policies is coming on a continuous control basis where the machines just keep on going through every data and figure it out. But what is more interesting is this one. Association rule mining. Let's say I come to Kolkata for a business visit. I would have my flight tickets my hotel charges, my taxi charges, and all things. What it is doing is, it is continuously seeing 
every association at domestic expenses which are being filed out here. And it will tell you when is the case where there is a big exception happening. It's a funnel approach, friends. You are only going to see those data which comes as an exception. And in one way, I remember when I was an article, whenever my principal was not happy with me, so I the next edit may 100% vouching. 100% vouching used to be a punishment. Today, 100% vouching is very much feasible if we actually use the technology in the right way. And that is exactly what I'm trying to show you, a real case scenario where people are right now using what we call it as the whole concept of you know, machine learning. So there are a lot of use cases which are there, and there is a lot of disruption which has happened. Now, the key question, just to summarize what we discussed, the key question comes is, how can we do it? Guys, one of the key things which is, I am again and again telling everyone, especially my professional brethren, we need to have a transformative mindset. You all agree to one statement which has been, I, I've heard the statement, I don't know who attributed to him. He said, what has brought you here will not take you there. You've heard the statement, right? Something which has brought us here is not going to take us where we want to reach. If we actually stay with the same thing that, oh, this worked for me in the last time, is going to work for us in the future, we are living in the fool's paradise. And you will, sooner or later, you'll realize it. It's change will be forced on us, that time we'll realize it. Or we can take a proactive approach. I would say there is a very interesting listing of uh, taxonomy of new services for accountant. It is on IFAC website. I don't know how many of you have gone to the IFAC website and seen it. Taxonomy of new services which should be coming it up. It's actually uh, given by AICPA and uh, what is this? Uh, Institute of Chartered of England and Wales. They have actually jointly published this thing. Not very comprehensive, but a good starting point. I would highly recommend you to check out that taxonomy. There are a lot of new services, guys. Lot of areas which are to explore. Come out of this basic concept of income tax and GST. I'm sorry, I don't have anything against them. I'm just telling you, think big. There are a lot of interesting things which are happening. And that is something which is going to move the business to the X. And this X is something very tough to define. But the way businesses are changing, the dynamic, you know, businesses are dynamic and they're going to become more fast, more, you know, I would say transformative in the time to come. And it's on us how we leverage it and take it forward. So that's all from my side. I can take one or two questions, sir, if possible, or no? No time? Okay, no time. Great. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity, guys. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, Ananji. Sure. Ananji has widely explained the intercessions of how auditors can perform audit function by using technology under the present era. It is an auditor responsibility to examine and evaluate the financial statement to ensure if accuracy and compliances. However, with increased complexity and volume of digital transactions, use of technology has become a necessity which has enabled the auditors to work more efficiently and effectively. The learned speaker, C. Anandji, has allowed us to understand in a very lucid manner the art of auditing using digital technology. I hope that each one of us might have hugely enriched in the knowledge which will guide them to perform their duties in a better way. Thank you, Anandji. Now I request Sandeep Sureka to further proceed. Thank you, Anilji. Very good afternoon to everyone. It's my proud privilege to offer a vote, hearty vote of thanks to our learned speaker, C. Anand Prakash Jangir. In second technical session of our 15th annual conference, it is indeed a matter of immense pride for us that C. Anand Prakash Jagin, 
eminent personality from Bangalore, has kindly consented to grace this occasion and has shared his word of wisdom with us. Sir, it is beyond any doubt that your expert deliberation on the audit using technology, the suggestion and views has significantly enriched our participant and they must have got a new perspective on how to use technology in audit in technology era. I, on behalf of VIP Road Charter Recording the Study Circle, extend a hearty vote of thanks to you, sir. As a mark of respect of conveying a sort sense of gratitude, I hereby call CMNH Dhandaniya ji to please come forward and offer a memento to see Anand Prakash Jagir. <coughs> May I request the audience to give a thunder of applause. <laughs> now, our very own past president of VIPCA and Cesar chairman of this program, C. Anil Mandavala ji. Sir, we thank you very much from bottom of our heart for gracing this occasion and wonderfully handling the session. I request C. A. Sumit Bihani, please to come forward and offer a memento to see Anil Mandiawala ji as mark of gratitude. So, sir, please welcome him with thunder of applause. We shall now straightway need head for the second part of second technical session wherein eminent personality shall enlighten on capital market. Now I request C. Vikas Bhatwar take charge of further proceeding. Thank you.